Dale Little here. I'm in Chesedadia, Romania, uh, with the Rescue America Ministries. Uh, I'm actually working here in Romania under uh, Finding Hope, volunteering with them uh, ministries, and um, have several children's homes here, and other things that we're doing, churches, uh, st- uh, establishing churches. Um, but bear with me on this, uh, uh, this song. It has no spiritual value at all. <laughs> it has to do with uh, a time in my life, though, that I know the story that follows after it. I hope you'll stay with me as I talk a little bit about my journey with God um, and how he's brought me and where he's brought me from. And I've done more in depth on this. It involves a particular time in my life. Um, and uh, so this is just an old country song uh, sung and written by Mel Tillis, I think. Well, once I was slave at the sawmill I spent uh, two years um, working in a sawmill. Um, my first business venture, actually. A friend of mine talked me into buying an old sawmill. And pardon me as I get rid of this. Um, and I'd never even run a chainsaw before, so he had to teach me how to run a chainsaw. Uh, teach me everything about cutting timber, and he was good. He taught me. He taught me well. Um, I got to where I was very proficient in uh, felling a tree where I wanted it to go. So, uh, and I watched him early on cut trees. That I thought it was impossible to get them to fall at a certain direction that he wanted them to, but he did. And he taught me how to do those things. And uh, I was able to do, never got quite as good as he was because they'd done it, um, he and his family had done it for uh, a couple of generations or so, cut timber and things like that. But I did get to where I could cut some trees that uh, you wouldn't think they'd, they'd go that way. And there's other times when I <laughs> failed just a little bit. I may have time to relate that, but I hadn't planned to. Um, Maybe I'll go ahead and start with it first. Uh, we were cutting timber down in a place called Love Valley, near Love Valley, North Carolina. Uh, some of you people know, it's my age, or close to it, know where that was at. Um, <clears throat> it was big back in the day. A lot of the hippies and things hung out there, and kind of like Woodstock uh, of the South, I guess. But... At any rate, there'd been a tornado come through a couple of years before and felled a bunch of trees and stuff. And so we went in and the guy wanted his timber cut and all that cleaned up. So it was a job. And um, I had um, was right across the road cutting from where our sawmill was set up. And we'd hired a guy to do what we call off-bearing. He would catch the lumber as it came off and stack it uh, <clears throat> as my partner uh, operated the sawmill. And I was cutting the timber and dragging the logs up into the to, to the mill there. Uh, well, we had several big big popular trees across the road, about three or four of them, I think, and the guy told us the owned property that to watch that there was power lines that went through there somewhere, and so I was mindful of that. And I'd got a couple of these trees down, but there was one, last one, and, and many times what you'd do is if you had one leaning just the opposite way of where you wanted to go, where you needed to go. <clears throat> um, we could take a long pole and put it against the shoulder and put it up as high on the tree as you can and push. It's amazing how much leverage you could get and, and move a tree and move it, but this tree was just too big. 
And I pushed and pushed until I was exhausted, and I finally looked down through the woods where it was going to go after I finished with it. <clears throat> looked for a power line. I didn't see one anywhere. I said, well, you know, I guess it's on out there somewhere. And I um, went ahead and just cut it and let it fall where it wanted to go. Well, before it got to the ground, there was sparks and fire started flying. <laughs> And it, it found that power line um, and hit the ground. The leaves were dry. It set them on fire. Now, <laughs> I actually ran to a house just across the road and up the road just a short distance from the, where the mill was set up, <clears throat> for 100 yards or so, and called the power company and called the um, um, fire department come out <clears throat> because I couldn't do anything. I would have tried to, you know, beat the fire out. Uh, but I wasn't getting in there amongst those uh, live wires. And so I knew better than that. Uh, and, of course, fire, the fire department was not going to do that either until the power was turned off. And so uh, I'm over there, and uh, you get a little too much oil mix in your fuel, and... Most of you know anything about chainsaws, understand this, but some may not. But you have to mix the uh, oil mixture with it. And if you get a little too much oil mixture, then what it calls for, it, it doesn't harm you saw, a chainsaw, but it'll, it'll make it smoke a little bit. And so uh, the, the guy would hire Dolph Bear and told my partner, and he was over there cutting up what I'd already drug over there. <clears throat> and he said, well, they, you know, I'll, Kind of worried about Dale. They lost smoke coming from over there. My partner said, "Well, he probably just got too much, too much oil in his uh, gas mixture." <laughs> and uh, actually, by the time they finally came to check on me, the fire department had already been there, and the um, power company had already cut the power uh, off and had the fire out by the time they came over to look for me. So anyway, that's just kind of a, uh, one of the lighter moments. Uh, uh, saw milling, but it was hard work, paid not much, uh, did make a living at it for a couple of years, um, uh, but that's about all it was. And so uh, we had old equipment, seemed like we was working on it, uh, and the older it got, you know, after a couple of years, we were working more on equipment than we were cutting timber. And I said, you know, after God had really got my life straightened out, I said, it's time to get out of here and uh, find something else. Um, Nobody out there to preach to out in the woods uh, to tell about Jesus, and that's what I wanted to do after God got me straightened out. But this is where it started. I was so far from God. Um, I got saved when I was about to, somewhere around 11 years old or so. And um, things happened in my life. I got disappointed a little bitter, I guess. Uh, not too bad, bitter, more than just disappointed. And uh, I've said that it's like Satan, looking back, Satan kicked my feet out from under me, and I didn't know what happened, so I, I didn't get back up. I just said, well, I, you know, I've never been in any trouble, been a pretty good kid. I was a, as a teenager and growing on up as a young man. I even went through the military, never drank alcohol. But... Um, then I said, well, I just see what I've been missing. And, oh, it's fun for a while, but it don't last. can't last if you're a child of God. It can't um, because the fun's not going to be fun for long. And so God had been dealing with me. And I, um, at break time one day, my partner um, asked the question that I would have answered positively a few years before. He asked about guardian angels. You know, did I believe in guardian angels? Well, yeah, I would have said yes, definitely. But this time I was so far away from God. I, I got so distanced that um, I kind of shrugged my shoulders and said, well, I suppose so. You know, didn't really know. It's been a while since I read my Bible, even though I'd read through it a couple times or more already before this happened. But anyway, 
Over the next two weeks, God began to show me. Yes, he was looking after me. And I was convinced that after this that, yeah, he had, I had a guardian angel, if not more. <laughs> um, but it, my friend had to teach me almost everything, teach, you know, about sawmilling, about cutting timber. And he taught me one thing was that when you're cutting a tree, you need to make sure it's not holding up a dead tree. Because when you cut that live tree, that dead tree's coming behind it, very possibly. Well, very likely. And so you do that for a while, but it's hard, it's hard work. It's hard making a living. You have to keep going. You can't slow down. And um, you have to keep full speed ahead. Sometimes you get careless. Sometimes you forget to look for these things that you know that you should look for. And so that's next couple of weeks, that's what happened. And I looked for a while and watched, you know, for these dead trees. But then, you know, I got in a hurry and trying to get out more lumber and uh, make a few more dollars. And I cut one, well, there's actually two of them within a few days of each other. That came down and within three feet of me. After I'd cut the live tree, I'm watching it fall, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, just I see a flash in front of me, and it's another tree. It came down and just missed me within two or three feet. I had it twice. But then that was the third time. And those first two made me think a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's a lot just to be coincidence that both of them missed me. Well, the third one took the bill of hit the bill of my cap and took my cap off, but I never got a scratch. Definitely then I was thinking, yeah, God is looking after me, uh, I think. <laughs> Begin to think very strongly. Still wasn't 100%. God's wanting my full attention, and he got it. Another thing he taught me, to, a friend of mine taught me to do was that sometimes you'd um, cut a tree and uh, it would get this piece of paper and use it for. You cut a tree, then uh, a lot of times it would come down and catch the tops of some saplings. And what it'd do was just uh, bend those over and pin the top under that tree after it hit the ground. And he said, you need to go ahead and cut those saplings off before you start cutting your tree up because once you start losing weight off of that tree, then those things will come back up. And he said, I've seen a person get his jaw broke one time like that. So well, our old chain, I say old chainsaw, we bought it new when we started, so it's less than two years old because that's as long as I stayed in the business. Um, but the... Chainsaw had been hit by a tree. I don't remember the details. I don't remember how that happened. I think maybe we had a second saw. We was using some. And, um, somehow it got hit. Well, it, it, it still ran, but it didn't run good. We had to keep it idled up real fast to keep it running because when you let go of the trigger, the motor is supposed to keep running and the chain is supposed to stop. But we had to keep it, this one idled so fast to keep it running that the chain continued to run all the time. It never stopped. It slowed down a little bit, but it never stopped. And so I was cutting some of those things off, and I reached up to cut one. And um, all of a sudden, it started letting go before I quite got it cut in two, and it pinched the blade, the chain, on the chainsaw. And that thing had enough catapult to it that... It took that chainsaw and went straight, jerked it out of my hand, and it went up in the air. Uh, it went straight up in the air. I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know where it went. All I know is it went out of my hands, and I know, knew that that chain was still turning. And I didn't know where it was going. I was afraid to look up and see where it went because I could see that thing coming back and hitting me in the face. And so I just bent over, put my hands over the back of my head, bent all the way over, just waiting of course, it always seems much longer than what it really was, but finally it came down. And honestly, it felt like someone had just took that chainsaw 
and set it real gently on my back, and it slid off on the ground behind me. That chain is still going. And I never had a bruise, and I never had a scratch. Now, it, didn't take any, <laughs> it didn't take any more to convince me after that. I knew God was looking after me. And I want to assure you that He's looking after you, especially if you're a child of God. Even if you're not a child of God, He's let you live this long to hear this message, to come to Him. He's got a brand new heart. Yeah, give Him your old heart. He, you don't need <laughs> He's got a brand new one waiting on you if you give it up to Him. And so, if you're a child of God or if you're not a child of God, God has brought you this far for a reason, for a purpose. So don't take it lightly. You can probably look back and see some things God's done. You may, you know, we, we say, well, we were lucky. Well, no, we're not lucky. God's looking after us. Giving us another chance, giving us another day. But God will not always strive with man. That's what his word says. There'll be a day when he'll say, I'm through. Now, I got kind of careless. Boy, I, I did. I, I, there's some other things happened also. And I've told those in other places. But I just, uh, boy, I just got so confident. Everything was working wonderfully. Man, I, I was cutting trees, and all of them were just falling ever exactly where I wanted them. And, I mean, you know, things just changed. Man, I was happy as could be out there cutting trees. And uh, But one day, you know, you get kind of careless sometimes again. Not just like I did before, but kind of with the attitude, well, God's going to look after me, you know. I mean, you begin to get to feel almost invincible. And you are in a sense, but you can't be acting the fool because God's not going to, uh, you know, continue to look after you if you're going to act that way. But I was cutting a tree, a big tree. Again, it's just God continuing to look after me, even in my carelessness. And what happens is, I mean, you got a woods all around you. If you don't have a clear path for that tree to fall and it hits another tree, it will kick it back. And so I'm, I'm cutting a big tree, big oak tree. And I'm looking around trying to find a clear spot for it to fall, but it uh, wasn't a real clear one. But I was hoping uh, that it was going to fall just short of the top of it hitting the tree in the distance there. But I misjudged it. It did the top of it just before it got to the ground. It hit that other tree and it kicked it back. Well, uh, I'd cleared me out a little spot to work with, work in to you know do the cutting thing. There's a lot of briars and brush around, and I'd cleared some of that out. And um, as soon as I cut it, I started backpedaling to get as you know, far away from as I could in case it did kick back, and sure enough, it did. Well, behind me was a tree laying crossways, and as I backed up, I tripped over it, fell backwards. Now, I don't know how this happened. Again, it had to be God. I, I, don't, I was not consciously thinking of anything. I just tripped and fell. But instead of falling back straight, I fell kind of sideways up against that tree that was already on the ground. And this tree jumped across and come down and landed. And if it not, had not been for that tree, then I'd been crushed. But I'm laying up against that tree. <laughs> and that other tree's come across and then back down. And that other tree kept it off of me. Another close call. But, again, it just reaffirmed to me how much God was looking after me. And he's continued to look after me all these years. I'm 74 years old now. 
got a lot of health problems. Don't give me you. Now, I don't want to hear the, you know, why aren't you healed? Are you supposed to be healed? And all that stuff. That's garbage. God heals who he wants to. He saves who he wants to. But if you call on him with a contrite heart, a broken, broken heart and a contrite spirit, I forget which one way or the other there, but you get the picture. The Bible says he will not reject you. He'll not ignore that. <clears throat> so call on him today. If you are either saved or unsaved, if you're just needing to get back in a relationship with God, or if you're lost on your way to hell, never been saved before, like I say, the Bible says, Jeremiah 17, 9, and you can hold on to that excuse if you want to that you're the way God made you. Uh, that don't count for anything. This is why. Because the heart that you have, you inherited it from Adam. We're all descended from Adam and Eve. Now people can say, well, that's just a, a story in the Bible. No, that's, the Bible is absolutely true. You can dispute it if you want to. But you inherited that heart, that wicked heart. And it's been passed down to all of us, me included. Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? I didn't say the heart of these people or this certain people. No, the heart of every person is deceitfully wicked. Doesn't seek after God until God begins to nudge and draw us to Himself. And then we start seeking a little bit. But on our own, we don't do that until God touches us. Now, go on over to Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 7. The different picture. He said, I'll give you a new heart. A heart to know me as Lord. Well, that tells me the old heart's not capable of knowing him as Lord. But that new heart is. You want a brand new life. The Bible says we're a new creation. Then you can have it. If you're disappointed, if God's convicted you of sin, if you're not walking with him, then you're in sin. So I'm inviting you to call on me to that today, right now. And you can pray this prayer after me. Now, I, want to, I, I have to make clear uh, that this, there's no magic words in this prayer. The prayer is not a magic prayer. God's looking at what's in your heart, but if you need to help express that, then you can say something like this to God. Father, I know I'm a sinner. I know I have not been walking in your ways. But I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, came and died in my place, gave his life, that I might spend eternity in heaven and I could have that brand new heart. A heart to know you as Lord. A heart to know you. And Father, I pray that you would help me, give me that new heart, and come into my life. And I'll do my best to walk with you with your help. And I trust that you will keep me from this day forward. In Jesus' name, forgive my sins. Amen. Something along that line. Or that particular prayer, if you really meant it from your heart. And if you did, maybe leave something in the comments. Uh, but we're praying for those that are listening. I don't know who they are. God knows every one of you. God, Father, I pray that you would touch hearts today with this message. Lord, someone... We hear this. I know. You didn't have me do this just to be doing it. 
that someone needs this message. I pray, Father, that you'd save them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, look, the Rescue American Ministry is now I'm working here in Romania. Um, with um, We're working under Finding Hope Children's Home. Nathan and Aka Merrill. Uh, I'll try to, my mind don't slip it, um, put something down in the um, uh, comments. Uh, if you would like to help in some way, uh, you, you can make your donations through them uh, and just tell them what you want for the uh, churches if you want to help and assist in what I'm doing here. Um, and so... Uh, however you want to do it, but that's the, who we're op operating under here in um, um, Dia, Romania. Uh, back home, we uh, have our work that we do, Rescue America Ministries, but not much going on there right now other than these videos, um, which I have to produce and send them out from here. But I... Uh, been doing teaching ministry. I hope you'll follow up on some of those. But like I say, finding hope if you want to help here in Romania with the work that's going on. Finding Hope Ministries, Nathan and Uncle Merle. And uh, like I say, I'll try to put a link. Dale Little, God bless you.